In this video, we're going to be talking about keywords, what keywords are and the different type of keywords. Now, there are three types of keywords that we could go after. The first one really gets bunched into informational keywords. Those are people who are looking for information about a particular topic. They are doing research. This is known as the first step of the buying funnel. The second group of keywords is navigational. Those are people who are looking to get somewhere like they're trying to get to Facebook or they're trying to get into a login page of, the, of a particular store or uh, uh, education. But the third one is the one that we're going to be spending all of our time on, and that's the transactional keywords. These are search phrases people type in before they're about to buy something. So they are super, super warm. Think about it. Uh, anytime you have been wanting to buy something, you would go to Google or you needed something to solve a problem. You would go to Google and you would type in a particular product name or you would type in a particular service. Now, you are already warm at that point. You are already in the a, a buyer mode. You are ready to make a transaction. That keyword that you're plugging into Google, those are the keywords that we are going to be going after. We want to target the long-tailed transactional keywords because short informational and navigational keywords like for instance, shoes are really vague and generic. If somebody types in shoes, uh, what type of shoes, right? Uh, red shoes or blue shoes, high heels or, or uh, running shoes, right? So just typing in, uh, just going after shoes is not really going to get after somebody uh, specifically. Now on this picture, we're going to be talking about keyword phrases. Over here on the left, is the search volume and down on the bottom is the conversion rate. So if we keep a generic, a very generic keyword, yes, there's going to be a lot of search volume, but that also means that it's, uh, it's vague and there's going to be a lot of competition. And typically uh, the cost, if you're going to be running paid ads is going to be a lot higher on this end. Okay, so tomato plant, again, high monthly searches, but also high cost and high competition. But as we go down and we go to the next rung here, it gets a little more descriptive, like when to plant tomatoes. There's 3,600 monthly searches. So there's less search volume, but there's also less competition and less cost to, to get after or to try and rank for this keyword. Where we want to spend the majority of our time is down on this the bottom end here, the long tailed keywords, where there are less average monthly searches, but there's a lot less volume of competition and it's a lot cheaper to bid on these particular keywords with, uh, with paid advertising. Now, these people here at the bottom are more likely to convert because they're asking a very specific question. And if you can answer that specific long tailed question, they're more likely to convert. Now, what does Google use to rank your keywords? Now, there's over 200 ranking factors for Google. I know, how are we ever going to meet all of their criteria? It is extremely difficult, but the one that matters the most is your main heading, your main long-tailed keyword. And after months of research, I realized that all I needed to do was find keywords that people looked for where there were little to no websites that showed up in the results. And then I was shown a hack. And this is a hack that is completely for free. And I'm gonna show you it right now. I was shown on Google that if you just type in in title, uh, semicolon, quotations, what your keyword actually is. So for this example, I used uh, landscaper Pearland. So a landscaper in the city that I live in here in Texas. And I typed in landscaper Pearland. What it will do is give you four websites that have landscaper Pearland as their main keyword. Now, this tells me alone that there are very few websites that are ranking for landscaper Pearland. And if I wanted to rank for this particular keyword, because there's only four websites here, 
that are ranking for that keyword, the chances of me landing on the first page and ranking for this pretty quickly is really, really good. On the wizard website where you would enter your long tail keyword, it would go in the blog post title. And then at the bottom here, it would go into your blog SEO title. This is going to tell Google exactly what your keyword is for your blog post. So how do we know what keywords to start going after? Well, Google Trends is a great resource for us to be able to determine what keywords we should start looking into. And I quickly just typed in crypto gaming because this is uh, something that's been talked about a lot recently. And when I went to Google Trends, you can see the keyword for crypto gaming is actually uh, pegged out at 100. There are a lot of people talking about it right now. So to create a, uh, a blog that talks about all the diff uh, different crypto gaming uh, new games that are coming out and some of the technology, you could probably rank really, really quickly because there is a lot of interest right now and a lot of web traffic on people who are looking to learn more about crypto gaming. So Google Trends is a really good, uh, for whatever niche you guys decide to go into uh, to, to build your blog around, make sure that you're, you're checking Google Trends to make sure that your uh, topics that you're covering and what your blog is about is trending up. Like you don't wanna see it like it is down here where there's very little search traffic and people going after specific keywords. You wanna make sure that there's a lot of traffic. Okay, and I'll briefly, I'm going to go into this uh, in the next video a little more in depth, but this is Google Ads Keyword Planner. And if you have a Gmail account, you'll it's as easy as signing up to Google Ads. And once you're in the Google Ads dashboard, all you have to do is go to Tools and then Keyword Planner. And what, key, what this will allow you access to is to see how often a keyword is being searched. And up the top here, I typed in artificial intelligence. So within around this keyword, you can see it's being searched anywhere between 10,000 to 100,000 uh, monthly searches. So this is a keyword that gets a lot of traffic online, but because it gets a lot of traffic and it's a shorter tailed keyword, it probably will be really hard uh, for a new blog to be able to rank for this keyword. So Google Keyword Planner is a really, really good tool to use if you don't have uh, any access to uh, some software, to a keyword research tool. And this just allows you a free way to see if there's any type of mon monthly searches going on for a particular keyword that you may go after. Uh, in future videos, I will be showing you uh, what tools I use that really, really allow you to narrow down exactly uh, without having to you know, go through and enter all this stuff in. We'll be able to automate all of this process and I'll be showing you that software, uh, it, like I said, in a future video. So ultimately, what we're going to be going after are long-tailed transactional keywords, just like this, that we know our people are searching for on, on search engines, and that will allow us the greatest chance to start getting search engine optimized traffic to our affiliate websites, which will then start to earn us affiliate commissions. All right, we'll see you on the next video.